living a casual Christian life. That's what I want to talk about. Living a casual Christian life. Now the word casual in a biblical context means feeling or showing little concern, nonchalant, lacking a high degree of interest or devotion, done with serious intent or commitment. Now you must understand that it is impossible <coughs> to live a casual Christian life without living a life that is filled with sin and iniquity. Mm -hmm. So, living a casual Christian life, there is going to be sin and iniquity involved in your life. Mm -hmm. And these things happen subtly and strategically, and many times you don't even realize that has happened. Mm -hmm. So then by definition, the word casual describes the behavior of many born again believers in the body of Christ. In other words, you are saved in the kingdom of God, but yet you have a nonchalant attitude regarding God and the things of God. And this is the epitome of a casual Christian life. And if you're not very careful, you will find yourself in this position because you won't recognize that it's happening because it happens strategically, gradually, over a period of time. The epitome of a Christian, of a casual Christian life, is based upon one non-committal attitude toward the things of God. I wonder, do we have anybody here that have gotten to be nonchalant regarding the things of God? The things of God no longer mean much to you. And if you are not careful, you will find yourself in this situation. And it happens strategically and gradually. It's being done by the hand of Satan. Now Satan is the God of this world. And like I always say that Satan don't like you because you remind him too much right. of Jesus. And if he can't keep you from getting saved, the next order of business is he's going to get you to live a casual Christian life. And when you're living that kind of life, you're never going to reach your potential in the things of God. Did God call you to be a teacher? Did God call you to be a preacher? Has God given you a business? Whatever God has given you, and if your attitude leans toward nonchalant, nonchalantness, a non-committal attitude when it comes to God, you will never reach your potential. Now I can testify to the fact that my knowledge regarding the things of God did not just hop off the pages of the Bible and jump into my mind. I had to spend many hours reading the Word, hearing the Word, and asking God for the revelation of His Word. But supposing if I had a nonchalant attitude regarding the things of God, that means that I'm going to be living a casual Christian life. And all of those that I would be leading, they would be probably living that casual Christian life because they would be listening 
to me yeah. because I will never say anything that's going to bring conviction. Mm -hmm. But I want to preach a message to pick you up, but sometimes the message needs to bring you down. Yes, yes. Do I have a witness at one? Yes, yes. Now Jesus did not die on the cross for anyone to live a casual Christian life. But Jesus died on the cross so that you can become a productive child of God and represent the kingdom of God everywhere you go. But you will never become an effective representative of God if you have chosen a casual Christian life. Because the casual Christian life, what it implies, it implies a believer that has chosen to live a casual Christian life. You cannot be effective That's right. in the things of God. That's right. You made the choice to live this Christian life that you're living. My question to you is, from the number one to the number 10, where do you feel like you are regarding the things of God? Are you one, two, three, four, five? Are you at 10? It's something that you need to think about. Because wherever you are, you got there because you made that choice. And to be effective, an effective witness in the kingdom of God, you cannot achieve that living a casual Christian life. Now what did I say casual mean? I said casual means feeling or showing little concern, nonchalant, lacking a high degree of interest or devotion, done without serious intent or commitment. So are you that? You cannot achieve excellence when you look at God, the things of God, with a non-committal, a nonchalant attitude. Christ didn't die for you to live that kind of life. Okay. He died so that you might become a productive child of God. How can I, how can I become productive? How can I become on fire for God? You cannot achieve that apart from the Bible, apart from the Word of God. You cannot achieve that because the Bible says that a believer must study to show himself approved unto God. A work that needs not to be ashamed, not in the mind of the truth of the, word, of the Word of God. So we have to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So in other words, you have to devote yourself to this. You have to yield yourself to it. And perhaps many earlier in their walk with God devoted this time to God. They gave this out to God. They put this much time in their study, this much time in their prayer, in their prayer button. For whatever reason, one has gotten away from this. Because I say that, you know, when you get into a, a casual Christian life, it's not something that happens just overnight. It is something that is done strategically. It's something that happens gradually over a period of time. It's kind of like earlier when I was talking about you're standing it at this fire, and it's hot. And the closer and closer you get, it gets hotter and hotter. But when you walk away from the fire, you start to get warm. And if you walk away from it far enough, you're going to start to get cold. But in order to get warm again from that same fire, you've got to get closer to the fire. So when you walk away from God, when you walk away from Him, and get away from the thing that called you to be on fire for God, the next day you know you're living a casual, Christian life, because the things of God now don't mean as much to me as they used to. But now, but you still want God to be the same. You still want God to answer your prayer. 
You still want God to, to touch your body. You, want, you still want God to supply all of your needs. You want all of this. But why have we turned our backs on God? There is too, 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 too many ministers, teachers, prophets, pastors, or whatever, teaching about things that don't uh, include staying on fire for God. A lot of times, you know, talking about position, positions in the church, talking about money, one's wealthy place and what have you. But there are too many people that are going to bust hell wide open, and it is because them whom God has called a living for themselves, a non, a casual rather, Christian life. And when they get in the pulpit, and when they start witnessing, they feel guilty of saying really what God wants them to say, because in all actuality, they're living that kind of life. Now, the Bible says, in Romans, the 12th chapter, in the second verse, it says, Be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Now, that verse is talking about, it's talking to believers. It's saying, be not conformed to the world. So what happened if I'm a believer now? And if I'm going to be conformed to the world, that means that I'm going to go right back to where I came from. And I was living a sinful life. But God died to get you away from that sinful life so that you can live a sound Christian life. So, the scripture says, be not conformed to the world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of the Lord. That's on you, and that's on me. So why is that necessary? The reason why it's necessary is because if I don't continue to renew my mind with the Word of God, guess what I'm going to do? I am going to backtrack. I am going to go back to where I walk. Before God ever delivered me. Where was I? And where were you? Before God delivered you. You were in the world. With a world in mind. So now that you are saved. The Bible says. Be not conformed to the world. Of the way that you used to be. Because the way that you used to be. Had you on an avenue. That led you contrary to the word and the ways of God. Yes, right. So the responsibility is on you and I. And see, something happens at Reno when one, you know, put this down. Something happens when one put this down. What happens is you're trying to live on what you used to know. Did you not know that what you used to know, sometimes you can let it slip? So you find a lot of believers will say, well, you know, I know that. No, you don't. No, you don't. You, you, you have a knowledge of it, but the reason why you don't know it is because you don't do it now. Now, the Bible talks about, now, don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. So what happened when I, when I, when I lay this down, when I, when I put it down, and I don't pick it up anymore? What, ha what happens? How can I maintain the status that I had at one time? Apart from that. I can't do it, baby. I can't do it, and you can't do it. So what is the result going to be? A casual Christian life. So what I'm doing, I'm living off of yesterday's information. Even though the word of God is for well self and heaven. But I'm living on what I learned yesterday, but guess what? You got to pick this up 
and to continue to renew your mind. See, renewing your mind is not something, Larry, that you do once and the job is done. See, it's continuous. It's in a continuous mode, if you will. My responsibility is to renew my mind over and over again. That means that I got to read the Word of God over and over and over again. Have you ever had this ever happened to you? Have you ever picked up your word and read something that you just read two months ago? And all of a sudden you get something fresh out of it. And in other words, you, you say that I read this two months ago. So why all of a sudden am I getting this fresh information out of it? It's called renewing your mind. And you're doing it on a continuous mode. So it's not something that you're going to just do once or twice. It's something that you'll never graduate from renewing your mind with the word of God. And so, as a result of people adopting this kind of attitude, the result will be a casual Christian life. Yeah. Now, I want to read to you here, out of 2 Peter, and, uh, and I'm going to show you something here. And uh, I've, I've read these scriptures a little bit before, but I want to read this. I want you to see this. In 2 Peter, the second chapter, start with the 20th verse. I want you to turn it there so that you can hear this and see it for yourself. In 2 Peter, the second chapter, the 20th verse. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Now, at the beginning of that verse, it's talking about you and I. We escaped the sinfulness, the pollution of the world because of the knowledge that we gained through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But if you ever get entangled again in the world, again, if you were delivered the first time, the Bible is saying that the latter part is going to be worse than the first part. Do I have a witness? Now, notice in the 21st verse. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. What did that verse say in Pastor Reese? The verse is saying, it would be better never to have known the word of God than to know it and turn around and walk away from it. So what is going to keep me from walking away from it? What's going to keep me from walking away from the word of God? What's going to keep me from walking away from the Word of God is me on purpose, getting my mind renewed with the Word of God, something that I do on a continuous basis. Because it's saying that it would be better not to have ever known the things of God than to know them, then turn around and walk away from it. But people are not just doing this on their own. They have to be influenced. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 People sometimes don't take into consideration the Satan factor. Mm -hmm. Satan don't like you. You can get saved. Okay, he couldn't stop that. Well, what are you going to try to do now? Is try to get you to live a casual Christian life. And that casual Christian life is going to be the beginning of you getting on an avenue that's not leading you to God, but leading you somewhere else. Now, a lot of people talk about, you know, there was no little Rahel. Uh, when you get saved, you can't lose your salvation. Honey, please. Please. Please, 
Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And it begins with you getting to know God and not stand on fire for God. And when you put yourself in that situation, you are on an avenue that's leading you on what I like to call a casual Christian life, which is an avenue that begins with getting you to the place where you can actually lose your salvation. How unfortunate would it be you standing before God and, and the Lord said that I knew you, but you didn't stay with me. You started to be influenced by people that you admired. You started, you started to be influenced by people that had money. You started to be influenced by Pookie, Ray, Ray, and him or what have you. So you literally walked away from me. But honey, the choice is yours. And the next day you know you are living that non shalot life and the things of God now don't really mean that much to you. Hmm? I mean, just, 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 just think about it. Just think about it. Now, people that were on fire for God, you mentioned the name of God. It irritates people. They want to try to defend the life that they're living. They want to try to talk about, you know, they... I'm on, I'm on fire. If you're on fire, I'm on fire. If you're going to heaven, I'm going to heaven. But all of that kind of nonsense. See, it's not about them. It's about you. It's about me. And I want you to notice here in that 22nd verse in 2 Peter 2. Notice, but it, it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sound that was washed to her wallowing in the mill. Mm -hmm. To me, mm -hmm. it is nasty. Mm -hmm. It is nasty mm -hmm. when a dog regurgitates, mm -hmm. walk away from it, mm -hmm. and then come back and consume it. Mm -hmm. I believe that Peter was trying to make it plain yeah. so that you can understand how nasty yeah. it is mm -hmm. to get cleaned up and become a Christian and turn around and go back to the place yeah. before God delivered you. Yeah. Yes. That's how nasty it is. Yeah. And, 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 and without God's word, you're going to live that kind of life. Without God, what's going to keep you from being nasty? Without God, what's going to keep you from telling lies? Without God, what's going to keep you from being promiscuous? Without knowing God, what's going to call you to have feel for God? So you have to renew the mind and understand what God's want. Be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. So that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of the Lord. So it's on you, and it's on me, and no one you like it. It's hard to really examine oneself, and you know none of us are perfect. Right. I'm not. I'm not talking about perfection. None of us. No, we, we can't. We, the only perfect person that has ever ever entered this earth was Jesus. Right. Amen. Boy, Jesus did. Jesus showed us. But we can attain. But we can attain. He showed us, and the Word of God points to how to attain it. I'm not talking about perfection here. I'm not talking about far be it, because we can't reach that. One thing we can do is stay on fire for our God. And the best way to do that is when do I? Take time for God. Is it just on Sunday? Hmm? <laughs> the enemy shows up more than just on Sunday. Yeah. What about Monday? Yeah. What about Tuesday? What about Wednesday? What about Thursday? What about Friday? What about Saturday? You mean to tell
tell me the only five that I get is the 45 minutes that Pastor Reese gave on Sunday? That's, that's, that's the only dive that I get? Now what about just study the show and say, that's, that's talking beyond Sunday. Yeah. Growing grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's going beyond Sunday. Yeah. See, Sunday is when we hear from God. But on Monday, when I read, that's when I get, that's when I get revelation knowledge. That's when I get my knowledge. And when the preacher's preaching, I can understand and know what he's saying is true because I've spent my time. Amen. But now, if I'm just depending on somebody else, guess what? I'm going to get leaky. I'm going to get leaky. The next thing you know, that the open mouth that I had, I done picked up again. That argument is a spirit. I done picked it up again. All that bad stuff that I laid down, I have picked it up again. Why? Because I laid down that what kept me on fire for the Lord. And now I'm living that casual Christian life. But I want God to keep his word to me. I want God to still do what he did before. And what if God sat you down and said, well, Norris, you have abandoned me, so now, why should I not abandon you? Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, he, he was saying that, well, I, I just said so that you can see that, but I'm gone. And I don't abandon my children, but my children are abandoning me. Because they have ceased to do what's in the Word, and the reason why they have ceased to do in the Word, because they no longer read over it from time to time. It's something that you have to, it, it, it's like you have to burn your mind with. Yeah. Amen. You have to burn your mind with it. And, and somebody might say, well, you're a preacher. Mm -hmm. But, I, but I, I know some ladies preachers <laughs> that don't get in the Word. Mm -hmm. You know, because what they learned, they're still living on what they learned years ago. Mm -hmm. But you remember I told you just a minute ago, you read something in the Bible two months ago, and you pick up the Bible today, after two months have passed, and you get something different out of the scripture, it's like that over and over again. And so you might say, well, you, you preach it. You preach it. You should be reading the Bible. You should be reading it. And I'm glad that I do. So that I will have something when I come in here to be able to give to you and not just talk about trying to get you rich. <laughs> I want to get you to the one that can make you rich above everything Amen. that's gone. Amen. Because this life that we're living now, it's not going to be over for too long. Mm -hmm. It's going to be over a lot sooner than what you think. Because the Bible says, after the appointment of the man wants to die, but after this the judgment, and after the, you know, after you die, you don't have an appointment with God. Yeah. And whether or not you 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 did what was right, it's going to be talked about. Mm -hmm. Did you do what I told you to do? I'm not talking about I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about that group. I'm talking about you because you're the only one that's standing before me. Did you do what I asked you to do? All right. All right. Are we okay? The 22nd verse again, then we're going to move on. But it has happened unto them, according to the true property, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the sound that was watched to her wallowing in the meal. As nasty, mm -hmm. would you agree? Mm -hmm. And now, the reason why most believers are not productive in the kingdom of God is because they have become too casual with God and the things of God. Such as very little or no devotion to God, a lack of commitment. Nonchalant, a nonchalant attitude. Things of church has lost its value to you. You must understand that a casual Christian life has symptoms and characteristics that cannot be hidden. Even though 
Someone that's living a casual Christian life, even though they try to hide the symptoms and the characteristics, but you cannot hide them because they are very visible. Have symptoms and characteristics. The symptoms and characteristics are what I just read. Very little, a no devotion to God. A lack of commitment, nonchalant attitude. Things of the church has lost its value to you. Casual Christian life has symptoms and, 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 and characteristics that cannot be hid, even though you try to hide them, but for the life of you, you cannot hide. Now, living a casual Christian life is the avenue that many follow and have literally lost their salvation. Let me stay here just for a minute. When you get on that avenue that the things of God mean very little to you, that means that it's easy to pick up stuff that you laid down. Mm -hmm. And the next day you know you'll pick it up this that you have laid down. You'll pick it up this that you have laid down. And you're getting closer and closer to that avenue that many believers have gotten on, not realizing that this avenue leads to a place. Where they're leading to. It is leading to the possibility of you losing your salvation. The devil understands this. You know what I mean? Like we know that God understands. The devil understand that, you know, once saved, I always say, the devil understand that that's nothing but a bunch of bunk. Mm -hmm. So why do you think that he come and tempt you? Mm -hmm. Why do you think that he get in your ear? Mm -hmm. And I always like to say, you know, in your head, there are three schools of thoughts going on at the same time. Your thoughts, thoughts of the devil, and the thoughts of God. I would like to know who's in your head. Hmm. Who's, in, who's in your head? Who told you? Junior, and I'm just using that, you have an example. Who told you to bless that woman out with colorful words? <laughs> the Bible that you read? Who told you, Lilia? to break into that store and see or steal that sewing machine. The Bible that you read? Or some thought that we put in your head? Who told you, Paul, uh, Paulette, to catch that check that was in your name but you know it wasn't yours? Hmm? Who, who told you, the Bible that you read? Or the thoughts that are going on in your head? See, you had put all of that stuff down at one time. But somewhere along the line, you done picked it up. See, five years ago, Paul, if you would have cashed that check, ten years ago, Lily, you wouldn't have stolen nobody's sewing machine. I mean, <laughs> you wouldn't have used no call for words. But all of a sudden now you done picked it back up. Casual. Christian life. That's lead. You away from God. Yeah. Yes. And if you're being led away from God, you why are you being led? You're being led away from God. You don't want to hear Jesus say that I, I knew you at one time, but you didn't stay. Mm -hmm. You left me. You left me. I gave you the freedom to choose, and I thought that you would have sense enough by now, after 15 years, mm -hmm. that I was the true, majestic. And only God, but you turn around and left me because you were influenced by somebody else. That okay? Let's look at the book of Revelations. In the book of Revelations, what I'm going to read to you here, you remember Jesus, when he was talking to John on the island of Patmos, and John was caught up in the spirit. And Jesus was giving 
John some words. And he was telling John to write down what he heard and what he saw. And that was seven churches of Asia at that time, and these were literal churches. And in this letter that Jesus was having John to write, it was a letter to the Lord Laodiceans. And in this letter, here are some words that's found in this letter. Letter that was letter of Jesus being sent to the Laodiceans. Is that okay? Now, let's see. I said three, and let's start with the 15 verse. Revelation. Revelation. What did I say? Revelation, the third chapter. And the 15th verse. I want you to see this. Now, this is Jesus speaking. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I wish that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now I wonder what was Jesus talking about here. He was talking about people that have gotten lackadaisical and living casual Christian life. He said, now, I wish you were cold or hot. But because you're neither cold nor hot, but you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. So he's talking about somebody that was not on fire, but someone that had made up their mind to live a casual Christian life after getting saved. Let me read it again now for that explanation. 15 verse. I know thy works. So are you saying, Pastor Reese? Are you saying, are you saying that the Lord knows my works? He knows my character? He knows what I'm doing every day? That's exactly what I'm saying. So he's telling John, write this now. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I wish that thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. In other words, I don't want to have anything yes. to do with you. Because you made the choice to become lukewarm. You walked away from the fire. The fire is there. But you are walking away from it. Notice in the seventeen verse. Because thou say, this is their excuse. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And Jesus responded, Know it, and know it not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Jesus was saying, I see you in a different, a different way than you see yourself. See, you see yourself one way, but I see the real you. And the real you have become casual toward me. Wow. Yes. Notice in the 18th verse, Jesus said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the, the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with asave, that thou mayest see. Notice in the 19th verse, as many as I love, I rebuke and chastise. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. repent. Now, in that 19th verse, I believe that the Lord is saying that I'm bringing this to your attention so that you can know how I see you. I see you differently than you see yourself. So I'm telling you to repent. Come back to your first love from where you have walked off to. Amen. Because notice, in the beginning of those verses, Jesus started off saying that I know your works. See, you ain't cold. You ain't hot. But I wish that you were cold or hot. But since you're neither cold nor hot, but lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. This 
is what Jesus was saying in the book of the church. Not somebody that was unsaved. Jesus is talking to church folk. Seven churches of Asia. Read it. There are seven churches that he had letters sent to. And the, these words that I'm reading were sent to the Laodiceans. Church folk. So I wish that you were one way or the other for me. But since you are not, I will spew you out of my mouth. And he turned around and said that, you know, the 19th verse, I'm going to read it again. And that 19th verse, last verse that I'm going to read out here, as many as I love, I rebuke and chastise. Be zealous that boy and, and repent. So he's writing him a letter because he loved him. He said, those that I love, I rebuke and chastise. So when the word comes forth, it's coming forth in love. And he said that now I want you to repent because I have pinpointed your fault. And all I want you to do now is repent. Mm -hmm. And I will restore you where you were. Amen. See, but if you don't, because you have gotten on that wrong road, guess what? You're going to keep going in the wrong direction. You're trying to get to New York. You're not going to get to New York going to Kansas City. <laughs> You're going the wrong way. You're not going to get to God. God through the field of sin and iniquity. you got to turn around and go that way. All the Lord is asking you to do, when he pinpointed, all he wants to do is say, Lord, I repent. I'm sorry. And the Lord will say that I had to bring it to your attention because I love you. The reason why I brought it to your attention is because I love you. Because if I didn't bring it to your attention, you were going to keep going the same way that you have been going for the last six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. Mm -hmm. And that road leads to an area where you don't want to go. Amen. How many people that you know? I'm talking about good church folks. I'm not talking about no, no sellers. I'm talking about good church folk. Don't go to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. That you know living casual Christian life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, doing all this crazy, you know, the drinking, whiskey, you know, drunk, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the street, arguing, fussing, fighting, and still stealing stuff. I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Calling on the phone, paying bills and what have you, getting, getting upset and loud with the folk that's trying to help them and what have you. You know, oh, thank the Lord when, when, they, when they get what they want. Okay, now it's, oh, thanks to Jesus. Right. You done showed you back now. <laughs> Don't let that smiling face fool you, honey. <laughs> oh, thanks to Jesus. Yes, Lord. So you done got what you want now. But you, but you know, you don't forget about how you came, how you started the conversation out. <laughs> See, when you get what you want all of a sudden, Jesus is good. He was good before you ever got on the phone. Am I helping anybody? Yes, yes. Matthew the seventh chapter. That's Matthew 7. You know, these are one of those messages I like to talk about. It, 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 it pinpoints in and, 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 and bring it back to certain things. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Some of what people be jumping up, shouting, clapping, all that stuff. Yeah. See, but sometimes, you know, like, certain things have to be saved. You know, yeah. And it's easy yeah. to get off. Matthew's what stopped. It's not the 19th verse. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore by their fruit ye shall know them. You see in the 19th verse, yeah. it's not necessarily talking about a, 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 a real tree. Right. He's talking about a man, people. Mm -hmm. If I can put it this way, paraphrase it, every person that bringeth not forth things that are productive for the kingdom of God will be hewn down and cast into the fire. In other words, they'll miss out. Right. Yeah. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. 
Notice in the 20 verse, Wherefore by their fruit, or by their ways, shall ye know them. Okay, now if you, you know a person, now we, we won't go there. I just leave. I just leave it like it is. We continue on with this talk. Wherefore by their fruit, ye shall know them. Notice the 21st verse. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. You must continue. Yes. Notice in the 22nd verse. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name did many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me, ye that work of iniquity. And so, you don't cast out a devil, you don't prophesy unless you have the Holy Ghost. So in other words, you were one time walking in a life that was on fire for God, but what happened? You turn from that and start living a casual Christian life. And can I tell you one something? Living a casual Christian life, you're going to be prophesied. Correctly. Right. And Lord have mercy, ain't no devil gonna be going out of nobody when you say come out of him. Right. You know what's gonna happen? You gonna say, come out of him. He's gonna say, I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> because they know your works. <laughs> and the Lord <laughs> The Lord is gonna say, Depart from me, I never knew you. So what what the Lord the Lord the women and you said that you never knew him. The Lord said that. They didn't remain with me. They didn't remain. You don't cast out devils and prophesy apart from the Holy Spirit. Right. It's impossible. The Holy Spirit lives within me, with live within you, and He gives you the power to do that. But when you begin to live that casual Christian life, you water down the power that's in you. And when you stand before Jesus, He's going to say, "I never knew you depart from me." And you're going to say, well, Lord, you know that? Did we do this for you, Lord? Did we do this? And Jesus said, well, yeah. Mm. But you didn't stick with me. Mm. You utilize your freedom to choose your free will to turn and walk away from me, and I had to let you go. You wanted to live the type of life, but you didn't want to live the life that I had planned for you. Mm -hmm. So I let you have the life that you chose to live. Mm -hmm. See, when you choose to live a casual Christian life, that came from you, not God. You will find God's plan the word for you. By just living according to the word, you're going to walk right into what God has for you. Did I want to preach? Did I want to teach? No, I didn't. But I'm so glad, man, that I yielded to that calling. I yielded to that anointing. I don't know. I mean, like, if I wasn't doing this, what could I do? I can't drive a big truck. I can't run a company. But I'm doing what God gave me the ability to, to do. And that is to expound and explain this word that's in his word. Yes. Is that okay? Yes. Let's look at another verse. Hebrew 10. Hebrews the 10th chapter. Let's start with the 26th verse. Are you there? Amen. 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 Hebrew 10, starting the 26th verse. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. But a certain fearful looking for a judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. Do you see this now? Notice the 28th verse. He that taught about the Old Testament, he that despised Moses' law, died without mercy under two or three witnesses. That was the old, that was the old covenant now. Yeah. But aren't you glad that you're not living under the old covenant? Yeah. Yeah. But notice in the 29th verse. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who have trodden under the foot of the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant. Well, with he was sanctified 
an unholy thing and had done despite unto the spirit of grace. In other words, when you know the truth, and I walked in the truth, and depart from it, well, you're going to be caught up in a whole lot of trouble. A whole lot of trouble. Yeah. Now, living a casual Christian life is a result of listening to false teachers that are being led by demon spirits, or demonic spirits. And because of this, many believers have departed from God and lost their salvation. Casual Christianity is very grievous to God because of the price that was paid for the salvation of one soul, which was the body and the blood of Jesus. Now when we look at 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 and 2, it says, Many in the last days, many shall depart from the faith because they have given heed to doctrines of the devil and seducing spirits. In a lot of times, a lot of days which we live, many would depart from the faith. So if you have been in the faith at one time and you departed from the faith, what kind of life are you living now? You're not going to say that I'm living a sinful life. You're not going to say that, but you're going to think that you're still living a godly life. Well, honey, no, you're not. You're, you're, you're still a Christian. But you're living a casual Christian life that eventually, if you don't get it straight, you're going to wind up losing that. In the latter time in which we live, many shall depart from the faith because they have listened to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devil. And this teaching comes through men. This teaching comes through men. Come through men. And that teaching is they have been influenced by the mighty spirits. So don't get caught up living a casual Christian life. Because it's so easy. And if you get in this position, many times you don't recognize. And Lord have mercy, you're not going to let anybody, let anybody tell you about it. Because it has happened strategically and on purpose over a period of time. Is that okay? Can I give the Lord a hand somebody?